When it comes to climbing to the top, these guys are the best. Watch and roll! Sleds going airborne, it's high flying action. Stay tuned, what you're about to see is guaranteed to turn you up and over. And inside out, Snowmobile Hill Climb Racing is next. It's the World Championship Snowmobile Hill Climb from beautiful Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Hello everyone, I'm Steve Weiss alongside Glenn Gillis and we've come to the Grand Tetons to determine this year's King of the Hill. That's right, after three great days of qualifying, we are gonna open up this hill and we're gonna see who our world champions are gonna be. We're gonna run our stock king, our improved stock king, and our mod king. We're down to our top five racers in each one of those divisions. Now the winners of those divisions will move on to the king of kings. What that's gonna be is all three kings will run against each other for that new title, the king of kings. Not an even playing field, difference in horsepower, difference in traction. It's gonna be interesting, so let's kick back, watch it, let them buck and have a good time. All right there, revving up the throttle. Let's go racing up on the hill. Today's event is sanctioned by the Rocky Mountain Snowmobile Hill Climb Association, the premier organization in the sport. This is one of nine events that we sanction each year. Uh, this is the world championship. We have racers here from Alaska, Canada, Michigan, Minnesota, and, and virtually all of the western states. And Glenn, for viewers who aren't familiar with this sport, we're talking about some serious vertical here. You're absolutely right. We're running the exhibition run here at Snow King Resort in Jackson. This is the steepest ski run in the lower 48 states. These guys are climbing a little over 1,800 feet in a little less than a half a mile, and they're doing it in right around that minute category. And as you can see, our first rider is on the course. That's 41-year-old David Sharp in the 208 sled. He's riding to Polaris. He's from Moxie, Washington. And Dave's been racing with the circuit for about four years. In the last couple of years, he has really come on strong. Like you said, he's 41 years old, so that puts him old enough to run in that master's class. So he's running against the old guys and the young men in the younger classes, and he has really come on and running good. And he's got a pretty good time going here. We are against the clock here. Some technique involved in getting all the way to the top. The clock keeps running. It's 122.65, an excellent time. Down here, it ain't too bad on the bottom. You get over the catwalks, it's real nasty. What Steep, happens here? there's rocks, there's holes, there's bumps, jumps, you name it. Uh, you gotta have some luck today to get over the top. Our second rider, Lonnie Keller in the 140 sled. He's 47 years old. He's riding an Arctic cat. He's from Calspell, Montana. Lonnie's been racing for 30 years is what he tells us. 30 years, great racer. He's getting in a little trouble, getting a little out of control. They've been running this hill for about three days and it is chewed up and tore up. It's the wildest hill climb that we have on the circuit. It's, this is a true hill climb here. It's more rider ability instead of all speed run like the other ones that we have are more speed and not near the challenge this one is. So we tear up sleds here. We don't see much of that at the other climbs. Next up, 23-year-old Jay Stickney in the 251 Polaris. He's from Calspell, Montana. And Glenn, help us understand what they're trying to do here technique-wise to get up this hill. The best way to describe this is a completely out of controlled control run. They, they've got to keep the skis down. They've got to keep the track speed up. They never want to back out of this on the way up. If you lose your momentum, you're done. This is one tough course and it'll get him. Jay, one of our newer racers, doing a great job finding one of them ruts, and he's going to get a mark right there. Once you get to this spot, you're just about done. It's exactly. Once you lose that momentum, it's over. There's a bunch of ruts, There's, uh, big bumps up there, it's steep. Some spots are a lot steeper than others, and if you don't have enough speed for them, it'll throw you off pretty good. Like I said, anything can happen. Get a good, get a bad bobble, get a good bobble. It's kind of luck at the bobble. A bobble or something like that's when your whole snowcat or something gets thrown. You got to bail on side to side to keep it all balanced, you know, to get her up through there and maneuver it up through there the best you can. So I guess that's what I guess that's what a bobble is. Our next rider is 26-year-old Matt Elliott in the 153 sled. That's an Arctic cat. He's from McBride, British Columbia, and I'm sure you've seen a few bobbles in your day, huh, Glenn? Boy, I'll tell you, we have seen some bobbles, and if any hill's gonna bring the bobbles out, Jackson's gonna, this is the king of them all. This is the granddaddy of hill climbing, and these guys doing a great job. We don't see a lot of Matt down in our country, 
He races mostly up on the Canadian circuit, but he got the invite to come down here. Great rider, putting a great run on the hill. Really shifting that body weight from side to side. It is a nice run, and he is going to make it to the top. He's got a time, 132.23 is his time. So an excellent run for Matt Elliott. Now we're on to Scott Barge in the 135 sled, and he's 35 years old. He's on a Polaris. He's also from Kalispell, Montana. Scott, one of our top rimshaw racers. He is always in the points for year end. Scott can pull some stuff out that is just amazing. Times you'll think he should be on his head. He's back up on that seat. Scott, just a tremendous rider, putting a great show on. If you'll watch him, he keeps the leg on each side, keeps things balanced, and just keeps her pointed up. And he looks like he's going to have an excellent time here, too. 1 2 56. That will give him first place. And it looks like he's the man right now that's standing first in line here for the Stock King class at Jackson Hole. Scott's time two seconds better than David Sharp. Came out of the hole and and I looked up and and I knew where I needed to be. I just shot her left and right before the rocks there, I jumped back to the middle and and uh, somebody's definitely looking after me. It just worked out really good. Um, I got over the spot that's been giving me a trouble all day and and from there she was pretty smooth. I just spent the whole day trying to get over that spot, so it was a neat feeling. This is the big one. Scott Barge is our Stock King champion, followed by David Sharp, Matt Elliott, Jay Stickney, and Lonnie Keller. Stay tuned, we've got lots yeah, more snowmobile championship hill climb racing to come. Welcome back to the World Championship Snowmobile Hill Climb, and next up, something really special, Glenn. This is the freestyle competition. That's right, and this is the newest in the extreme snowmobiling competition. You're gonna see a lot of high-flying action, a lot of crazy stuff. These are some of the highlights from the earlier competition, and this is just amazing to see these sleds fly like this. And we're gonna have something real special coming up here, and that is a young man from Valdez, Alaska, is gonna try what, Glenn? He's gonna try a backflip. Never been done in snowmobiling competition. Coming up here real quick, Jay's down there getting ready, getting warmed up, planning this run. It's never been done before. Jay down there, the crowd really cheering him on. Let's see what he can get done here. Once again, Jay Quinlan trying that backflip. First time ever, and he nails it. Perfect run by Jay Quinlan, and you've seen it here tonight. First time I've ever tried to break doing a backflip, trying to bring the nose down. So uh, it was a good experience. Right on, man. Congratulations. Wow, let's take another look. What is he thinking here? I'll tell you, I'm thinking he's thinking right there, I'm in big trouble. Like I said, he breaks it. Got that nose back down. This is unbelievable. First time caught on tape in competition. Jay gets the job done and we caught it here. Boy, some real history being made there. Let's move on now to the improved Stock King class. Our first rider is Rick Ward in the 7X. He's 40 years old. Rick's riding a Polaris from Sugar City, Idaho. And speaking of history, this right here is the winningest man in hill climbing. He comes in this weekend with over 60 King titles. This is what everybody's striving to do right here. Rick Ward, first racer up in this improved stock, trying to set the pace and put the pressure on the rest of this group. So Rick with an excellent run up the hill. He's really pushing that Polaris all over the place. Gets a little close to the flag there, but an excellent time, 1-12-22. Oh, being first up, it puts a lot of pressure on you because you don't know what you've got to do for sure. So I was just kind of letting it all hang out and hope it'd work out. I come real close to turning the top gate out, but it stayed standing. So things went good and I'm wishing the best for my teammate, Darren Gould. He's coming up here in just a bit. So he could knock me down real quick as well as the other guys. It's always tough. You never can count it until it's done. Here's one of the guys who's going to try to knock him off the top spot. This is Brian Henderson in the 14, and he's 19 years old, riding an Arctic Cat. He's another Canadian racer. Another one over Canadian. He's been spending a little more time with us. Like I said, he's just 19 years old. This is his second year racing with us. Brian, really a good young racer, running into some trouble there. And I'll tell you what, this is every racer's nightmare you're seeing right there at Jackson. Boy, that sled gets out of control. Do they? What do they do to stop that thing? We got the hill help up there, and if they can get a hold of it before it starts doing its flip, then our life's good. If not, they got a catch in it at the bottom of the hill. And it just keeps going and going. And, oh, one of the workers takes it in the face there. Oh, my goodness. Let's take another look. 
And you know, these hill help don't get enough credit because these guys are crazier than the racers on the mountain. Oh my goodness, and there you see it. This is a dangerous sport all the way around, whether you're riding or watching or helping. This is our next rider, David Sharp. He's on the 208, sled out of Moxie, Washington, 41 years old. He's also on a Polaris. Yeah, right. and you seen Dave earlier running for that stock king run. He only he got the second place on it. So you're gonna see him run even harder here. Dave Sharp been up and over this hill a couple of times today. Should have a way picked if he can just keep it out of them deep ruts. Is it difficult to adjust from one sled and one class to the other, Glenn? You know, really, they keep the suspension stuff set up about the same. The only real difference between this and his last run would have been horsepower, and he's got more here. He used the horsepower very well. An excellent time, 113.59. That's good enough to put him in second place. A little bit behind Rick Ward, but he is definitely in the running here. Next up is our fourth rider, Sandy Sletton, on the 259 sled. He's out of Pinedale, Wyoming. Sandy, another one of our younger racers, been racing with us for four or five years. Really good young man, racing good. He's out of that Wyoming country. Sandy will put a good run on here, fun to watch. He's got this sled heading up the hill, and boy, you're right, Glenn, things starting to get pretty chewed up in here. You know, these guys, as, you, as they come past that catch net right there, that's the first cow. These guys are turning speeds up to 50, 60 miles an hour coming up this hill trying to keep that momentum and trying to keep control of it as they go. Again, we see the technique as he moves from one side of the sled to the other, gets a little wide there. Looks like he's having some problems now, Glenn. Sandy looking like he's in big trouble there. He's lost that momentum up there in them ruts and he is over. And I'll tell you what, these guys are like the hill help jumping in there, trying to get it stopped. A not able to get it done sliding down on its top, on its back, and I'll tell you what, somebody up above is looking out for that sled. Let's take another look at Sandy's wild right here. This is kind of like a buck and bronco, Glenn. That's exactly, I mean, and it's a lot longer than an eight second, and it just throws him. Luckily for him, it throws him out of the way. Boy, where are those clowns when you need him to kind of run that wild animal off? He is lucky to get away without getting hurt on that one. This is our next rider, Darren Gould. We heard Rick talking about him a few moments ago. He's on the number 19 Polaris sled. He's from Teton City, Idaho. Right, he's Rick Ward's team partner. These two compete each against each other just about every weekend. They travel everywhere together, best friends. This is Bronco Billy, Darren Gould. Another great, great rider. Out of that Idaho country, these guys up there can ride. I'll tell you what, you'll see a great run here put on by Darren. He's got a time to beat. He's got to beat that time of 112.22 that Rick Ward already posted. Again, you see him working that way up through the hill, and these guys all pretty aware of what everybody else has done and what kind of line they've taken, haven't they? Uh, you know, and these guys sit at the bottom of the hill. Rick, Darren getting into a little bit of trouble right there, coming up over that catwalk. That'll cost him some time. But they sit down there with spotting scopes and binoculars trying to pick that path from the bottom, but you never really know what's gonna happen until you head to the top. Darren's time, 117.41, not enough to beat Rick Ward. All right, and that will be Rick Ward's 62nd King title. Rick Ward, this year's improved stock King of the Hill. That is just amazing. Here are our final results. Rick Ward on top, David Sharp, Darren Gould, Sandy Sletton, and Brian Henderson. Stay with us, we've got more great racing to come. Steve Weiss and Glenn Gill is back with you at the World Championship Snowmobile Hill Climb. And Glenn, this is really a chance for the fans to get up real close to the sport, isn't it? You're right, Steve. And these guys put on a first class hat. You can get, wander down through the infield. You can check out all the latest in snowmobiles, snowmobile toys, apparel, aftermarket items. Plus, we've got a great right. top bikini like team up here clear. signing calendars. It doesn't get any better than this. Lots to see and do when you're in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Next up is the Modified King class, and the hill is awaiting these guys. Our first rider is going to be Travis Zollinger, number 20. He's only 27 years old, riding a Ski-Doo. He's from Nibley, Utah, your neck of the woods. That's exactly. Live just down the street, Travis Zollinger, Ski-Doo rider and riding really good. Tough competition, and I don't know if we mentioned this, but he's running against his dad and brother in this Mod King run. These Modified sleds, about the only thing that has to go here track driven and skis on the front. So we got a real family competition there and his time 110.52. Next up is Sid Zollinger in the number 49 skidoo. He's 48 years old from Logan, Utah. Sid would be the dad of this bunch. 
Once again, we are in the mod class. These mods, they're turning upwards of 200 horsepower. They've got titanium on the track. Pick. These are just unreal and amazing sleds. The amount of horsepower these guys are turning is unreal. You really see them get up the hill and another nice run here. Sid's going to come up with a time of 115.72, so a good run for Sid on uh, the Modified King competition. You know, that 49-year-old stuff comes into play right there. Sid doing a little parrot grip there, catching his breath. It'll take him a minute. Oh, boy, there's nothing like getting up that hill, and I'll tell you, it takes a lot out of you physically, and at this point, you're just glad to be at the top. What a ride, huh? That was fun. Our next rider, Tony Zollinger, number three in a skidoo from Avon, Utah. The youngest of the three Zollingers, Tony really coming on strong. Tough, tough young rider here. Tony Zollinger lives there on the dairy, milks cows every day. And yeah, I mean, he's tough every weekend. Tony Zollinger making a great run, trying to put that fast time on the hill here. You really do see these Modified Kings really get up the hill quick. Boy, I'll tell you what, these guys turn in time just over a minute. Like I said, they're climbing about 1,800 feet. Tony's time, 113.78. That moves him into second place behind his brother, Travis. Next up on the hill, Sid Archibald in the 231 sled. He's 21 years old. He's on an Arctic Cat, and he's from Richmond, Utah. All right, Sid's one of our younger racers. Just been racing with the circuit a couple of years. Tough rider. Good young racer, Sid Archibald, riding that cat. In fact, he's the only cat rider in this mod competition. Running for king. Gets it way high in the air, and Sid's in trouble. They're going to mark him there. Won't get a time. Tough break for Sid. Even with all that horsepower, all it takes is one little mistake, and you are in trouble real quick. All right, only one man left, and that is Dennis Dermis in the 222 sled, 37 years old, riding a Polaris. He's from Whitewater, Colorado. And this is tough competition here. Dennis Dermis, snowcross racer, hill climber. Every weekend you'll see him racing somewhere. This run right here is all or nothing. This will be a bonsai run. Dennis will either get it or it's going to be nasty. And I'll tell you what, Dennis has got a great run going up, taking it over the top. Rock and roll, Jed! Oh, I bobbled really bad at third catwalk. Thought I lost it, but got right back on it and uh, managed to get it right up through. So it was a tough run. Um, I'm just happy. My goal's accomplished. I've been waiting for it for a long time. So Dennis Dermis with three tenths of a second better of a run than Travis Zollinger, followed by Tony Zollinger, Sid Zollinger, and Sid Archibald. We'll be back for the exciting King of Kings competition coming up next. Welcome back to Jackson Hole, Wyoming, site of the World Championship Snowmobile Hill Climb. A huge crowd on hand, and they've seen some excellent racing today. And boy, the sled's technology is just amazing, as we see in this report. One of the ways that Fox is helping the racers here at Jackson Hole win this weekend is with a variety of different products that we offer. Everything from our simple IFP-style shocks up to our fully adjustable, externally adjustable shocks. One of the main shocks that we basically are featuring this weekend, you're gonna see a lot of the riders like Rick Ward, Darren Gould, Tucker, and Kirk Hibbert riding on, is our new Fox Float Air Shock. Basically, instead of using a spring on this shock absorber, we use air as a springing device. This allows us to have a much more progressive spring rate and a much lighter weight shock. One of the neat features on these shocks is you can see they have no spring on them, which always adds weight to your sled and chassis. This we're calling it an air spring, but it's an air bladder. And it's got a little petcock on it, just like you'd have on a regular car tire. You can put this little pump on there and uh, increase your dampening pressure. Anyway, we've messed around with it this weekend. We're running about 65 pounds in them. And so far, we're liking them. It's a good way to get rid of three or four pounds on the front of your sled. If you put them in the rear, you can get rid of another five, six pounds. So. I think Fox is on to something neat that a lot of sled heads are going to like. And boy, they're going to come in handy now, Glenn, because we're up for the King of Kings competition, and this is one rough, tough, chewed up hill. This is. We are on the fourth day of racing here. First time it's ever been done, King of Kings. Scott Barge in the 135 sled, 35 years old, on that Polaris from Calspell, and he's got a good run going. Great run going by Scott. Scott is our stock king of the hill. He's running that stock sled against the improved stock and the mod sled. 
He's going to have to put one heck of a run on in order to get it here. His work is cut out for him. Again, he doesn't have the horsepower the other sleds do. He doesn't have the horsepower. He doesn't have the traction product. And it's showing right here. Scott getting in a little bit of trouble. Still got her pointing up and going to get her over the top. A pretty good run. 118.63 on his run. Next up is Rick Ward in the 7X. As we said, 40 years old. He's on that Polaris. And we saw Rick just a moment ago talking about those Fox shocks. And there he is using them. That's right. And like we said earlier, he has won 62 King titles now. Rick Ward going to try and put that heat on Dennis Dermas, who will be coming up later. Oh, and Rick's in trouble. Gets on one of them moguls, puts it on its side. They're going to give him a mark there. You don't see that every day from Rick. It looks like he does still get a time, though, 118.96. I guess he was just across the finish line. Must have been just across that finish line. Rick Ward always knowing how to get it done. Last man, here he is, Dennis Dermis in the 222, and he is once again, as you said, flying up the hill. It's all or nothing. That's right, another bonsai run from Dennis Dermis, looking for that king of kings, wanting to be the first man ever to own that title. Got a good run going, and he is packing the speed up there. Dennis Dermis. Riding that Polaris, taking it up to the top. And this is really special, and he's got an excellent time. 109.95 is the time they give Dennis Dermis. What a run for our King of Kings. Back and roll! So Dennis Dermis, our first time ever King of Kings, and he is standing by. This hill will eat the best of them. I mean, the rocks can stop you. You just there's a lot of time you just got to get your teeth and hold on the gas and uh, get through the rock gardens and uh, the stuff like that when we have the bad snow and and today I got away with it. Polaris should be very happy. It, it, it's great that uh, we, we won all three classes though, not just me. The other two drivers, Rick Ward and Scott Barge, won the stock and the improved stock, so it was a great day for Polaris. A great day indeed for Polaris and a great day for our King of Kings, Dennis Dermis. Glenn, your final thoughts. Well, it's been a great weekend, four days of awesome racing. You've seen the first ever King of Kings. You've seen the first ever backflip this weekend. What an unbelievable weekend. We'd like to thank the Rocky Mountain Snowmobile Hill Climb Association and the Jackson Hole Snow Devils for all the time and effort put in to put an event like this on. It was a wild, wild weekend here at the World Championships. Thanks to Glenn Gillis, I'm Steve Weiss, and thank you for joining us at the World Championships Snowmobile Hill Climb.